Good day. Today we're looking at value added tax. At the end of this unit, you should be able to define value added tax. You should be able to identify the criteria for becoming a VAT vendor. You should be able to explain the difference between input and output VAT, as well as explain the difference between standard rated, zero rated, and exempt supplies. Further, you should be able to identify standard rated, zero rated, and exempt supplies. And finally, you should be able to calculate the prices of supplies, inclusive and exclusive of VAT. Let us start by defining value added tax. Value added tax is a transaction or a consumption tax. It is a tax that is added to the value on goods or services that are transferred or sold. In other words, it's a tax on value addition. Value added tax is an indirect tax on the taxable supply of goods or services. When we talk about an indirect tax on the taxable supply of goods or services, what we mean is that if you do not consume any goods or services that are subject to value added tax, then you will not have value added tax or you will not incur value added tax. The excess of what a business charges to its customers in VAT over what the business is charged by its suppliers in VAT is paid over to the receiver of revenue. In other words, we're just saying output tax minus input tax is what is paid to the receiver of revenue. We'll look at output tax and input tax further on in the slides. Value added tax is governed by the VAT Act of 2000 in Namibia, while in South Africa it's governed by Act Number no. 89 of 1991. Let's look at how VAT works in a supply chain. VAT is collected in stages throughout the supply chain. VAT is not a cost of the business. It is just collected by the business on behalf of the government. Assume you are interested in buying cheese. Before the cheese gets to you as a customer, there are processes that take place. We will look at a simplified example. The first stage starts with the farmer who produces milk. The milk is then sold to a milk processor and distributor. The distributor then supplies the milk to a cheese manufacturer who converts the milk into cheese. Assuming the manufacturer is also a wholesaler, this wholesaler sells the cheese to various retailers who then sell it on to the public. At each stage in the supply chain, VAT is charged. VAT on sales is known as output VAT, while VAT on purchases is known as input VAT. The output VAT for one company becomes the input VAT for the next company in the supply chain. You will notice that at the end of the supply chain, it is the final consumer that pays the cost of the VAT. The final consumer pays $6 in VAT. This is equivalent to what the government receives. At each stage in the supply chain, input VAT is deducted from output VAT to compute the amount that is payable to the government. The government collects this revenue through the receiver of revenue. At the first stage, the farmer supplies the milk at a cost of $10 and charges VAT at a rate of 15%. The total cost of the milk supplied is then $11.50. At this stage, the farmer has no input VAT. Thus, the farmer has to pay $1.50 to the government. At the second stage, the milk distributor sells the milk for $20 and charges VAT of $3. However, the milk distributor has incurred input VAT of $1.50. Thus, the net payment to the government is $1.50. This process continues until the final retailer. The retailer charges the customer $6 in output VAT. However, the retailer can claim $4.50 in input VAT. Thus, the net payment to the government is $1.50. Adding the payments of the four suppliers together, the total payments to the receiver of revenue amounts to six Namibian dollars. This is equivalent to what the final customer pays the retailer in VAT. VAT registration. Businesses may only charge VAT once they are registered for it. It is compulsory for a business to register for VAT if their taxable suppliers are greater than 500,000 in a 12 month period in Namibia while the value of the taxable supplies have to be greater than 1 million in South Africa. Businesses can also voluntarily register for VAT if their taxable supplies are greater than 200,000 in a 12-month period in Namibia, 
while in South Africa, the value of the taxable supplies has to be greater than 50,000, but less than 1 million. This in effect means that no person who makes taxable supplies less than 200,000 in a 12-month period will be allowed to register for VAT in Namibia, while in South Africa, no person who makes taxable supplies less than 50,000 will be registered for VAT. A VAT vendor is someone who is registered for VAT. While a supply is a, the provision of goods or services in the ordinary course of business. For the purposes of recording a VAT transaction, the invoice based system is used. Under this system, a taxable supply is deemed to have occurred at the earlier of the date on which the invoice is issued for goods or services supplied or the date on which the payment is received. Types of VAT We have two main types of VAT. One is input VAT and the other is output VAT. Input VAT is VAT on purchases or services re rendered. Input VAT is an asset for the business and it can be claimed back from the receiver of revenue. Output VAT is VAT on sales or services rendered. Output VAT is a liability for the business and it has to be paid to the receiver of revenue. At initial recognition, all assets, income and expenses are recognized at the amounts that are exclusive of VAT. The VAT amount due to the receiver of revenue is the difference between the output VAT and the input VAT. In other words, output VAT minus input VAT is the amount that is due to the receiver of revenue. Supplies of goods or services. Supplies of goods or services can be split into two main categories. We have taxable supplies and we have exam supplies. Taxable supplies are further split into two categories. One is standard rated supplies and the other is zero rated supplies. Standard rated supplies are supplies at which VAT is charged at a rate of 15%, while zero rated supplies are supplies at which VAT is charged at a rate of 0%. Exam supplies have no VAT consequences. Examples of standard rated supplies include items such as non-current assets such as furniture and delivery vehicles, we have current assets such as inventories, and we have expenses such as stationary bank charges and insurance. Some examples of zero rated supplies include certain foodstuffs such as brown bread, maize meal and mahango flour. Also fuel is a zero rated supply as is international transports of passengers and goods. Also, when you sell a business as a going concern, this is a zero rated supply. Examples of exempt supplies include capital contributions by the owner or cash drawings by the owner. Also, any interest expense is an exempt supply. The letting of residential accommodation is an exempt supply, as is local public transport, such as taxis. Look at zero rated and exempt supplies in more detail. Zero rated supplies are supplies of goods or services on which the supply can claim input VAT of 15%, but on which output VAT is levied at a rate of 0%. We can illustrate this with an example. Take a supplier of Mahangu or top score flour. The supplier will charge 0% output VAT when supplying the top score or the Mahangu maize meal. However, the supplier will be able to claim any input VAT on any item that was used to make that supply. In this instance, the packaging that the top score came in, the supplier will, able, will be able to claim 15% as input VAT on the packaging. Exam supplies. These are supplies that are not subject to VAT at the standard rate or at the zero rate. In other words, they are non-taxable supplies. For instance, local public transport. When you take a taxi from home to town, you will not be charged any VAT and the supplier or the taxi driver will not be able to claim any input VAT. In the previous slides, we learned that a supplier may claim input VAT on standard rated and zero rated supplies. However, there are some supplies for which input VAT may not be claimed. These include the following. The purchase of passenger vehicles. No input VAT may be claimed on the purchase of passenger vehicles. 
However, input VAT may be claimed on the purchase of delivery vehicles. Another item for which no input VAT may be claimed is the purchases of goods or services for entertainment purposes. For example, input VAT on refreshments that would be used in the staff cafeteria. This is considered entertainment and no input VAT may be claimed on those refreshments. Another item for which no input VAT may be claimed for is membership fees to sporting, social or recreational clubs. In all these instances above, the input VAT on these items will form part of the cost price of that item. There are some other transactions which have a VAT effect but are not taxable supplies. These include the write-off of trade receivables as irrecoverable, the recruitment of a trade receivables debt after it is written off as irrecoverable, drawings of trade inventories by the owner, donations of trade inventories. We will look at these examples in more detail in part two of the slides. There are some other events that have no VAT effects. These are not exempt supplies, they're just events that have no VAT consequences. For example, the payment of salaries and wages. Salaries and wages usually attract income tax. That is why they're not subject to VAT. The recording of cost of sales, that will also have no VAT consequences. VAT consequences will only arise on the sales of an item or on the purchase of inventory. Depreciation also has no VAT consequences, as depreciation is just recording that an asset has lost its value. Year-end adjustments also do not have any VAT consequences. For example, any prepayments, for example, prepaid insurance, stationery on hand, or the write-off of trade inventories. Another item that has no VAT consequences is making an allowance for doubtful debts. The VAT return. At the end of the VAT period, this can be a period of either one or two months, or even longer, depending on the VAT jurisdiction. The VAT vendor will have to submit a VAT return to the receiver of revenue. If the input VAT is greater than the output VAT, then the receiver of revenue will have to pay the supplier. However, if the output VAT is greater than the input VAT, then the supplier has to pay the receiver of revenue. Normally, the payment must take place by the 25th of the next month following the VAT period. Any business that makes taxable supplies is required to issue a tax invoice to its customers. The tax invoice should contain the following information at minimum. The words tax invoice must appear in a prominent place. It must include the name, address, and VAT registration number of the supplier, as well as the name and address of the recipient. The invoice number and the date of the invoice should be clearly indicated, as well as a full and proper description of the goods or services supplied, as well as the quantity or volume of the goods or services supplied. The amount including and excluding tax should also be clearly shown on that tax invoice. The calculation of value added tax. An amount can be stated as either being inclusive or exclusive of VAT. If the amount is exclusive of VAT, it means that you still have to add VAT to that transaction in order to get the total amount that a customer is going to pay. Whereas if an amount is inclusive of VAT, it means that is the amount that the final customer will have to pay. To calculate the VAT when an amount is stated as inclusive of VAT, you will take that amount times R divided by 100 plus R. R is equal to the VAT rate. When an amount is stated as exclusive of VAT, in order to find out the VAT amount, you have to take the amount times R over 100 in order to get the amount of VAT. Let's illustrate the calculation of VAT using a VAT rate of 15%. If an amount is displayed as inclusive of VAT, then the VAT amount will be equal to the amount times R over 100 plus R. In this instance, R is 15%, so 
So in order to calculate the amount of VAT, when an amount is displayed as inclusive of VAT, you're going to take the amount times 15 divided by 115. Where an amount is exclusive of VAT, we still have to add VAT to the amount to get the final price that a customer will pay. In order to calculate the VAT amount, you just take the amount times 15 divided by 100 to get the VAT that is going to be payable by the customer. This will become clear when we deal with the following example. The example states, a registered VAT vendor is presented with the following transaction. He buys goods from S Trading for 100 exclusive of VAT. And the second transaction, he buys goods from S Trading for an amount inclusive of VAT. You are required to calculate the VAT for the two transactions. Let's look at the first scenario where the amount is displayed exclusive of VAT. We know that when an amount is displayed exclusive of VAT, that the VAT amount has to be added to the amount so that we get the total that is payable by the customer. In this instance, we will use the VAT exclusive formula, which is equal to the VAT amount is equal to the amount times R over 100. In this instance, the amount was 100 and the rate that was given was 15%. That's why we say 15 divided by 100. Therefore, the total amount of VAT payable is 100 times 15 over 100, and we get an amount of VAT, which is $15. To get the total amount that's payable by the customer, we start with the amount, and then we add the VAT to it, and the VAT was 15 in this instance, so the total payable by the customer is therefore $115 million. Let's look at scenario two. Scenarios two stated that the amount is included inclusive of VAT. When amounts are inclusive of VAT, we know that this is the final amount that the customer will have to pay. Thus, in order to calculate the VAT amount, we have to use the VAT fraction formula, which is equal to the amount times R divided by 100 plus R. In this instance, R was 15%. Therefore, we have to say 100 times 15 divided by 100 plus R. In this instance, it's 100 times 15 divided by 115, which gives us an amount of 13.04. In order to calculate the exclusive amount, we're going to start with the amount that is payable by the customer. In this instance, we know that the amount that is payable by the customer is 100. Therefore, we say 100 minus the 13.04 VAT that is payable in order to get a VAT exclusive amount of 86.96. To summarize, we have learned the definition of VAT and how VAT works. We have identified the criteria for becoming a VAT vendor. We learned what is meant by input and output VAT, as well as the difference between standard rated, zero rated and exam supplies. Finally, we learned how to calculate VAT. In the next lesson, we will learn how to record VAT in the accounting records.